All right, so um, you see the title of the video, so let's get right into it. All right, now, um, chakras, you know, they're real prevalent in um, Eastern mysticism and other, a lot of practices such as like Buddhism, Hinduism. I don't know about Sikhism, but also in you know, the New Age esoteric practices that's been transported here to the West or the East, if you believe in that whole flip-flop uh, map thing. But um, that being said, the best way to look at them, uh, and I'm not endorsing these. I'm not endorsing these. I'm not saying um, do these things. Um, I'm saying I'm about to tell you what they are so you can understand them. Um, but I'm not endorsing the practice. I don't recommend it at all. You know, I'm not, I'm still like, I'm not too versed on the Bible yet. So I'm, I don't know uh, what they were what it refers to in terms of different like practices like that but um from my own experience they didn't necessarily they could have brought negative experiences but from the ideas i'm about to convey in the um, video you'll see how they can be a danger um because anything outside of the word of god is suspect so you can bring in negative or positive entities when you do practices such as like you know chakra meditation chakra tuning uh, reiki healing and things of that nature but I digress. Uh, what I'm about to say is that uh, chakras, so essentially, they rotate in uh, portals on your spine, right? You know, that relates to like the kundalini um, that is your your spiritual column. And um, in Egyptian, like, times they referred to it as the, the, the jed, but it was less so, less chakras back then. And there's different type of chakra systems. You got the, the basic uh, seven chakra systems over here. Uh, and like uh, Tibetan Buddhism, you got the Kal Chakra system. That's like six. Um, you got the 13 chakra systems. Um, you got like chakra systems that's related to every point on your body. You know, you got hand chakra, ear chakra, mouth chakra, eye chakra. You know, it's like, uh, but essentially all a chakra is like a swirling pool of energy. And these represent portals. These represent openings into your soul right into your um your spirit so that is why it's um it's like caution i am not recommend it with dealing with them because when you open a portal anything can come through um you can offer up protection but then like other forms of protection like say like the arm chant in buddhism um hinduism they are obviously okay and <laughs> introducing like demonic spirits like, if you look at tibetan buddhism if you look at um, Hinduism, their deities are like a very demonic looking. And I know they represent different things. Like the Haruka Buddha represents uh, like the uh, scaring away of uh, like, um, what does it call it? Um, things that are mar your soul, like anger, envy, jealousy. It looks like that to scare those things away from your soul is what they say. Um and then they, um, there's like, you know, if you look at Kali, uh, she's got like a severed head that's supposed to represent the severance of your ego from your head and like the man's on the ground. So, but that's kind of weird because that's related to like the whole effemination of men, emasculation of men. So that coincidence is a little bit too, um, it's too coincidental for me to be like, okay, they're not related. So. I'm just going to err on the side of caution with that and say the demonic. Uh, with that being said, though, um, yeah, those are portals into your your soul, your, into your psyche, your mind. So anything can come through and use other practices to, like, ward them off. And I know that from personal experience can just increase them or they give you um, temporary relief in the guise of relief. But they, like, they really about to, it's going to be a cycle of relief. Uh, torment relief torment relief torment and that's gonna get you deeper and deeper into the practice but yeah each one corresponds to like an organ system right so the lower three in the seventh chakra system is like you know uh your perineum your sacral bowl your solar plexus uh, and those represent things like um identity family survival sex food shelter you know 
those things on the lower three represent those things. Uh, and each one meditating on those things is supposed to give you relief in, in those areas. The certain symptoms associated with an overactive system, you might have like too much pride. So an overactive solar plexus. You might have, you might be lustful. An overactive uh, root chakra. You might have like sexual identity issues, also root chakra. You might be so uh creative that you daydream and like it's hard for you to stay focused uh, over at the sacral chakra so you know all those relate to those those things um now uh going up above you got you know your heart your throat your third eye and your crown all right so those are the higher levels of, and these are related to things like humanitarianism um religion like connecting to a higher power um, visions, dreams, effective communication, uh, love of all things, you know, uh, even vegetarianism to a degree, but like an overactive, um, an overactive symptoms you might feel with those are, um, like opening up to the wrong people, overactive heart, um, saying the wrong thing at the wrong time, not knowing what to say, getting choked up. Uh, getting choked up is underactive. Overactive is talking too much. So I kind of, yeah, you know, overactive is talking too much. Um, third, third, I mean, like you might have uh, overactive. You might see too much. You might see too many things in people, and they might not be accurate. It could be like a distortion of your own concept of them. You might see innocuous, like happenstance things that are just like, oh, someone walked past me. They were in a blue shirt with stripes in it. That was related to something that, you know what I'm saying? You think you can make connections that they dare, but they like can't help you and you get paralyzed. Uh, over at the crown, you have like um, kind of similar to like uh, with the third eye, uh, daydreaming too much. I um, mean, in the sacral, uh, daydreaming too much. Um, like you have like uh, unclear visions, unclear messages, garbled messages from around. You might have like psycho, psych, psych, uh, excuse me. Uh, not psychoism, but like uh, psychotic breaks, you know, things like that. Um, like overactive, underactive, like you might not believe in a higher power. Uh, you might have love for no one. You might be cold. You might be psychopathic. Um, you might never talk. Uh, you might not be able to speak up for yourself when you need to. Um, you might not be able to see anything, anything. You think it's just a straight up material world. So that's like overactive uh, in those areas. So that's what those things are. I, um, they each like correspond to like planets too. Um, but I ain't gonna get into that into this video. But like you know, uh, they also kind of correspond to like deities and stuff throughout time, like mythological figures. But like you know, it's a lot of things with that system. Um, even more if you get into the thirteenth system, the Carl Trocker system. It's like a lot of different things, but essentially what they are are like portals into your uh, soul. So they open up the gateways for like energies to enter in or leave. And like they're part of like the whole cyclical nature of reality. You know, that's what they really are. That's what they represent. But the thing is, like, whether they're real or they're not, is really it's like saying, are your emotions real or is your soul real? Um, So they're not tangible. You can't touch them. Right. They are they exist in your mind, and your mind can create scenarios that are real from you thinking they're real. So like you can know this from like the placebo effect, right? Um, like someone give you a sugar pill and tell you it'll help you, and you feel better, but it was just a sugar pill. Or even like is music real? Like music, you can hear it, obviously, but it's not physical. Is like radiation real? You know, they, these is this is like how you would answer if like chakras are real. Um, if they 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 can't um, exist on a person in terms of like someone might have it because you know you got a pineal gland that corresponds to your third eye, you know, but like uh, these other ones are really kind of like they're like um, they're like schemes uh, for you to understand your own body. So like when someone back then would say, okay, this is my my uh, root chakras overactive, they refer to like their anus. The perineum, um, well, like their uh, the coccyx, you know, they're referring to those areas of their body. They're referring to, oh, my sacral's acting up. They're referring to like their sex organs. They're referring to their creativity. 
um they not feeling they you know they feeling grounded or not grounded so these were like things for people back then to understand like something they could they didn't have the way to explain like my sex organs are acting up i got like a a urinary tract infection or something you know um my, i'm heart i'm grieving because someone's in um i knew it was past so that's like my um that is my um my heart chakra is like overactive you get what i'm saying so they are real in terms of like how schemes in your mind are real how stereotypes stereotypes have truth but they're not completely true you get what i'm saying they are true to a group of people but that's not true for every person so that's what i'm saying so that's my little video on chakras and what they are and I had to go into a different how they related to like uh the the planets and all that and uh as above so below. And I I'm not saying that in terms of like I'm adhering to it, but I'm saying that in reference to that is like the whole idea about how you have them in your body and how they pertain to the planet. So I'm not a Satanist or nothing like that. Um yeah, so there you go. Videos on chakras. Thank you for coming.